Summary of a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens It's Christmas Eve, and it's been seven years since Ebenezer Scrooge's only friend and business partner, Jacob Marley, died. Scrooge is in his counting house, having a cruel monopoly on the coal supply and leaving his clerk Bob Cratchit out in the cold. Fred, Scrooge's nephew, comes to visit, but his constant holiday cheer gets on Scrooge's nerves. When Fred suggests that Scrooge spend Christmas dinner at his house, Scrooge says, humbug. The next people who come to see Scrooge are two men who are collecting money for the poor. Scrooge thinks that the poor should stay in the workhouses, so he sends them away. When Scrooge gets home, he is met by a number of ghostly figures. First, the doorbell turns into the face of Jacob Marley. Scrooge doesn't believe what his feelings are telling him and runs upstairs. But he gets another call, this time from the spirit of Marley was tied down with a big chain that clanked. Marley's ghost tells Scrooge that he has been going from place to place trying to make up for the wrongs he did while he was alive. He tells Scrooge that he is going to end up in the same way, which is even worse because of his mean spirit. Marley tells Scrooge that over the next three nights, three ghosts will come to see him. Marley then leaves, and Scrooge goes to sleep for a long time. When Scrooge wakes up, it's still dark, as if no time has passed. He is met by the ghost of Christmas past, which looks like a highly lit candle and makes Scrooge think of his youth and old age at the same time. He flies Scrooge out the window, and they pass over scenes from Scrooge's childhood. First, they see him sitting alone in school until his sister Fan comes to get him and take him home. Then, they see Scrooge as a young man working as an assistant for the Fezziwigs. It is a happy time with parties and music. Then, Scrooge sees the moment when his girlfriend Belle broke up with him because he was so focused on making money. This makes Scrooge feel bad. The ghost goes away, and Scrooge goes to sleep. The next time Scrooge wakes up, a warm light is coming into the room, and the ghost of Christmas present, a friendly giant in a fur robe, is sitting on a feast of Christmas food. This spirit leads Scrooge through the town, where it visits the happy townspeople secretly and sprinkles their dinners with magic incense to make them happy. They go to Bob Cratchit's house, where his big, hard-working family is busy getting ready for Christmas. Bob brings his disabled son Tiny with him. Tim goes home and tells his wife that the poor kid is getting better. Tim's daring move Scrooge, but the ghost can't tell Scrooge how much longer Tim will live. Then, they go to Scrooge's nephew's house to watch the party sing and play games, often making fun of Uncle Scrooge. Scrooge starts to have fun playing along with the games without being seen, but the time is running out for the spirit. He shows Scrooge two poor children hiding under his coat. Their names are Ignorance and Want, and he warns Scrooge to be especially careful of ignorance. The next night, the third and last ghost comes towards Scrooge while wearing a black coat. Scrooge can only see the ghost's eerie, bony hand pointing at him. Scrooge is scared, but he wants to learn what this ghost has to teach him. He is taken to the business area, where businessmen are talking about the death of a mean man in a casual way. Then they see a group of people going through the dead man's things and trading them for money. Scrooge is taken to a dark room where he sees the dead body wrapped in a cloth. He wants to see sadness or tears over this man's death, but all the ghost can show him is a family who is happy about his death because it gets rid of their debt and Bob Cratchit's house, which is filled with grief over the loss of poor Tiny Tim. Last, the ghost leads Scrooge to the strange dead man's grave in a churchyard, where Scrooge sees his own name written on a stone. He is so scared and sad that he can't stop crying, and he tells the spirit that he will always keep Christmas in his heart. But the ghost goes away, which makes Scrooge cry. Scrooge wakes up, and he is so happy that he can change the future. He laughs and shakes so hard he can't stop, and when he finds out it's Christmas morning, he sends Bob Cratchit a prize turkey. He wishes everyone he meets on the street a Merry Christmas, and then he goes to his nephew's house to party and play games. The next day, he gives Cratchit a raise. Over the years that follow, he helps make sure that Tiny Tim not only lives, but grows and becomes known for his Christmas spirit. About the author. 
Born to a Navy clerk, Dickens and his family moved to London when he was 10 years old. Charles worked long days at a factory when his father was in jail for a short time because of debt. His struggles with money and being poor had a big impact on the way he wrote and what he wanted to do with his life. He stopped going to school when he was 15, but he read a lot and learned a lot from his jobs as a law clerk, court reporter, and writer. Dickens's first book, The Pickwick Papers, came out in 1836, and it was a big hit. He quickly became the most famous writer in Victorian England because of his memorable characters, clever humor, and biting social criticism. He was also very well known in America, where he did a lot of reading trips. He worked hard and made a magazine called Household Words, which later became All the Year Round. He also wrote many great books, such as Oliver Twist, Bleak House, Great Expectations, David Copperfield, and A Christmas Carol. Dickens and his wife Catherine Hogarth had ten children, but their marriage was never happy. When Dickens had an affair with the actress Ellen Turnan, Catherine left him. Dickens died in 1870, and he is buried in Westminster Abbey's Poets' Corner. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.